All right, so once all those installations are finished, in that last section that we started, we generated a new project, and I'm going to change into that new project directory. So then I want to start up the React server with npm start. All right, so now we've got a fresh React application up and running. So now I'm going to want to make sure that they open up my code editor in that new project directory. So I'm going to find that blog post folder we just put together, and I'm going to open that thing up like so. And then finally, inside my SRC directory, I'm going to find all the automatically generated files inside of here, and I'm going to delete them all. Aha. All right. So remember the first take that uh, we're going to do on this project. We're going to put together a single component, and then we're going to write out all of the JSX that we need to make these three different comments all in one file. And inside of my SRC directory, I'm going to create a new file called index.js. And then at the top of this file, we will put in a little bit of familiar code. So I'll say import react from react. And I will do the import react dom from react dash dom. Then I can make a new app component, and inside there, I'll return a simple div that says, hello world. And now I can go to the bottom of the file, and I'll do react dom dot render, and I will render an instance of my app component. So now I want to render it into document.querySelector. And I'm going to find that div with an ID of root. All right. So now I'm going to save this file, and then we should be able to flip back over to our browser and see that text, hello world, appear on the screen. Okay, so it looks just dandy. So now we're going to need to start replacing this div that we have here with the list of comments instead. Now, to be wholly honest with you, this is not a course about basic styling and CSS. So please, just remember, I'm doing it simple. We're going to talk about how to integrate CSS in different forms into a React project, but we're not going to spend a tremendous amount of time writing out CSS from scratch. So what does that mean? When I look at this list of blog comments right here, there's going to be a fair amount of CSS styling that we're going to have to do. So rather than writing out all of these CSS from scratch, we're just going to use a very handy CSS library to essentially take care of all that styling for us. So let's talk about the styling that we're going to use. First, we're going to navigate semantic-ui.com. Okay. I'm going to open up a new browser tab and navigate to semantic-ui.com. Semantic UI is an open source styling or CSS framework. And you can click on this menu button on the top left side and then scroll through all of these different elements that are provided here for you. You can click on any of them and take a look at some of the default styling that you can get if you make use of this semantic UI library. So it's just a CSS file that's going to give us a little bit of default styling. Now, if we make use of Semantic UI, we can essentially get all of the styling that we need for free without having to waste a lot of time on it. Now, if you want to exercise your design skills, that's something different. So with that in mind, let's just install Semantic UI. Okay, so now we could install the Semantic UI following the getting started documentation here. And it tells us how to put all of this stuff together from scratch using build tools. But 
There's definitely a much easier way to install this. So for that, my friends, we're going to navigate to Semantic UI CDN. So if you open up a new browser tab, you can search for Semantic UI CDN. And then the first link that you'll see right here will probably be something like cdnjs.com. All right, you see it? So if you follow and you click on that, it will just take us to a page that lists all of the different versions of that Semantic UI library. See, so that's nice and easy to use. That way we don't have to do any additional build steps or anything like that. Now you'll also notice here that there's many different versions of this library. So we're going to look for something called semantic.min.css. And you can probably just scroll down and look for it on the list. Now, if you can't find it in the list, you can always hit Command F, do a quick search. There it is, semantic.min.css, just like that. So now we're going to copy that link right here. Now, this is a link to a publicly hosted version of the semantic UI at CSS file. So we can very easily use that inside of our project. So I'm just going to quickly copy it over here for the min.css file, and then I'll just paste it inside of the HTML file that is currently used for our project, which is inside of that public directory. So inside of public, I'll find index.html, and then we're going to add this CSS file into our head tag as it would just any other CSS file. So after the meta tag right here, I'll put a link and rel equals style sheet, and then href equals, and then I'll paste in the link that I just copied from that CDN page. And make sure that on the right hand side, I'll close off that tag like so. All right, so now I'm just going to save this file. And then if I go back over to my browser and find localhost 3000, we should see that the page has automatically refreshed and you'll know that semantic UI has been loaded up properly. And look at that. The text font right here has changed slightly. So that way I know that semantic is installed correctly. Now, another way, of course, that you can make sure that it got installed uh, would be to right click anywhere on the page open up your Chrome inspect menu, and then go to the network tab. You can then click on this CSS option right here and refresh the page. And you'll see that semantic min dot CSS got loaded up successfully. All right. So now we've got this style and library for free. Stay tuned for the next video.